Sting looks set to miss AEW Double or Nothing through injury. New Japan Pro Wrestling makes their impact felt on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite on TBS. Plus, the finals of the Owen Hart Foundation Cup men's tournament have been finally revealed. Wardlow gets his match against MGF. Plus, a custom TNT championship is on the way. All this and more in today's AEW News. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling, considering, of course, it's AEW Double or Nothing Week. Double or Nothing is this coming weekend. And one person that doesn't look like they're going to be at Double or Nothing is the icon Sting. Now, Sting won't be in Las Vegas this weekend to meet and greet with fans ahead of AEW's Double or Nothing pay-per-view. Now, AEW announced on Wednesday, yesterday, that the icon, quote, has not been cleared to travel and will therefore miss the fan event. AEW has offered refunds to fans who purchased tickets to see Sting. Now, of course, on last week's episode of AEW Dynamite, Sting was on the receiving end of a beatdown at the hand of the undisputed elite. This was after taking a double super kick from the Young Bucks. I say a double super kick. It's been quite largely uh, panned, parodied, mocked on social media because... It wasn't the best. It wasn't the best super kick or double super kick we've seen. Um, it basically went to his shoulders and all that kind of stuff. And look, it, it didn't look great. And I know people will say, protect the business, protect the business. Sting has a history of neck issues. And some of the stuff he does, still, I go, oh, that is crazy. At his age, even without the neck issues, if it means him not getting kicked in the face, protects, protects his neck, I'm fine with it. I don't, I, to be honest, I, I don't really get, I, I, mean, I get it because some people just, for whatever reason, hate AEW or don't like AEW and are, are doing that, it feels like their life's mission is to convince people not to watch a television program, which to me seems bizarre because you wouldn't do that <laughs> for any other TV show. Imagine, like, imagine... You know, you're you're a big DC film fan, and all you do is create a Twitter account showing bad CGI or bad things of Marvel, and go, "If you watch Marvel, you're an idiot." I, I just don't, I don't get that. But that's that's social media nowadays. Uh, nevertheless, he took that double super kick from the Young Bucks. He also had his ankle smashed by Kyle O'Reilly. Now, there's no word yet on the seriousness of Sting's injury and whether last week's injury angle was done to write him off of television for the time being. We don't really know a lot about it. It's purposely vague, certainly. Now, of course, at last year's Double or Nothing event, Sting and Darby Allen defeated Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky in a tag team match. This was actually Sting's first match in front of a live audience since his match against Seth Rollins at Night of Champions for WWE back in 2015. And I remember at the time being cautious and going, oh, I'm not sure we saw the cinematic match, but how's that going to go? And I really enjoyed it. And to be honest with you, at points when it comes to Sting, I have said maybe it's a little bit overdone, and particularly recently when he's been doing this just insane stuff. I mean, it really does feel like a guy that's been told for <laughs> five years or so, you can't wrestle, you're retired, you're done. To be told that he can do it, he's jumping off balconies, and he's done it several times, which is nuts. Even at his age without any of the injuries, it's nuts, let alone the prior time he was in the ring back in 2015. They thought he was going to be paralyzed or he was nearly paralyzed. So it's just, it's nuts. It really is nuts. Um, of course, he's had these really fun matches in AEW. And I have, to be honest, really enjoyed Sting's run. I have. Um, ultimately, we just don't know a lot of details about it at the moment. We don't know if it's serious. We don't even know if it's real. Um, they, it could have just been a work. It, it could have been something whereby Sting wasn't available for whatever reason this weekend. Maybe he had prior commitments and they just wrote him off of television for an injury angle. Maybe they just didn't have anything planned for him in terms of a match and they said, okay, we'll write you off television, we'll bring you back and we'll do something a bit different. We don't know. Ultimately, we don't know the circumstances of the injury, if it's real, if it's a work, if it's a shoot. Once we find out more details about it, we'll talk about it here on the channel. Let's talk about Dynamite last night. Let's talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling making their presence felt ahead of, of course, the Forbidden Door event approaching next month. Now, of course, with that Forbidden Door pay-per-view event approaching next month, New Japan Pro Wrestling stars are starting to make their AEW targets known because last night on AEW Dynamite, FTR, of course, the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, were defending their titles against Rapungi. Vice 
and the match was an impressive show for both teams, especially considering the signature manoeuvres dished out that were kicked out of, nevertheless. Uh, as the match seemed to be nearing its end and Vice hit a strong zero on Harwood, Jeff Cobb and Great O'Khan from New Japan Pro Wrestling's United Empire stormed the ring and started demolishing everybody in sight. Now, before the segment ended, Cobb and Great O'Khan sent both Harwood and Trent through the tables on the outside of the ring. They then slid back inside the ring and held the Ring of Honor tag team titles over their heads, making their intentions known. So this could mean that we're getting some kind of Ring of Honor uh, tag team championship match at Forbidden Door involving FTR and maybe... Uh, Cobb and Okan, or maybe involving all three teams, we just don't know. Now, of course, it wasn't Jeff Cobb's only uh, AEW appearance. He has made an AEW appearance in the past. He was Chris Jericho's chosen opponent to face John Moxley in February of 2020, which feels like a lifetime ago. Despite losing that match, he did impress Tony Khan and other talents within AEW at the time. This is when Jeff Cobb was a free agent. And he was reportedly offered a deal, but he decided to turn it down and continued to be able to work shows with New Japan. And I mean, I say indies. It was a strange time because the the, the pandemic wasn't in full force yet. It was right before it. And it was just it's a, it was a wild time. But other members of the faction, the United Empire in AEW, include the likes of, of course, uh, Will Ospreay, TJ Perkins, Kyle Fletcher, Mark Davis, Aaron uh, Hanair, Francisco Akira. So it'll be interesting to see if more members come across. I would think, certainly, I would think that we're probably going to see more of this. Uh, I mean, uh, Rampage is live on Friday, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of it on Rampage on Friday. I think we'll definitely see something at Double or Nothing this coming weekend. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, then Forbidden Door is in June, so we're going to get a lot of involvement. And it's going to be interesting to see how they actually set up that show, whether they... they weave this New Japan invasion into storyline or they just announce it as a supercard because I think they could do two ways couldn't they certainly they could do it as New Japan suddenly decide to keep showing up and AEW stars show up on New Japan Strong and all that kind of stuff and they actually make storylines happen or they could just say this is the card this this is the card we're going to do and maybe those big matches the rumored one for the United Center is CM Punk versus Okada maybe CM Punk wins this coming weekend at double or nothing which I think he will and then on the following episode of Dynamite that's when Okada comes out and the match is set that's that's what I do think will happen but I have to wait and see it's an exciting time, certainly. And I've mentioned that AEW has felt a bit cold recently. And even with last night's episode of Dynamite, as most we said, the show was fine. The show's always fine. There's bits that are good and bits that you would say, oh, I'm not really sure about that. But I'm fascinated to see how they do set up this Forbidden Door show. And I think last night, this segment in particular, was an example how they plan to do that. Now, speaking of Double or Nothing this weekend, the finals of the Owen Hart uh, Men's Foundation Tournament are set. Adam Cole versus Samoa Joe are set to collide one-on-one -on -one at Double or Nothing. Last night on Dynamite saw the last semi-final match between Joe and Kyle O'Reilly, with the winner knowing that the match with Cole awaits him at the pay-per-view. And Samoa Joe got the victory with his uh, Kikina clutch, got the knockout victory of course joe now advances to sunday's double or nothing pay-per-view in the final of the tournament it's a difficult one to say who would win i would lean more on adam cole i think adam cole will win i think that tony khan's clearly a big fan of adam cole and people can question his booking and all that kind of stuff but and they'll say oh, he feels like less of a star in AEW. i've seen people say that well, he headlined the last pay-per-view against Hangman Page. Of course, he didn't win. But if he wins the inaugural Owen Hart Foundation Men's Tournament, that's a pretty big deal in itself as well. I don't expect Joe to win because, frankly, he doesn't need to win. I feel like this is something for Joe to do in the interim before Ring of Honor truly gets up and running. I think he's going to be, whilst he's going to be on AEW programming, I think he's going to be based a lot on Ring of Honor programming as well. That's why he's the ROH television champion. He's not got that belt for no reason, frankly. So... I think Adam Cole wins. Um, the one hope that I have is that it's not marred with interference by Sanjay Dutt or Satnam Singh or Jay Lethal. It shouldn't be, but don't rule that out. But I would be quite disappointed if they have a tournament final finish that way. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Dynamite last night also saw a face-off between CM Punk and Hangman Page before their uh, AEW World Championship match, of course, coming this weekend. Um, obviously, last night's and with Rampage on Friday and Double or Nothing this weekend, everything's based in Vegas. So, of course, they have to reference CM Punk's pipe bomb in WWE, considering that was the, the scene of where it happened. Now, during his face-to-face -face confrontation with Hangman Page, Punk admitted that the biggest moment of his career happened in Sin City. He said, quote, 
I think it's safe to say that the biggest moment of my career happened right here in Las Vegas. I'm grateful to be in the position I'm in. I love all you fans around the world. I plan to walk into Double or Nothing Sunday and very respectfully walking out the champion. Uh, Paige then mentioned how he had fantasized about sitting cross-legged on the ramp and verbally assaulting Punk in the same vein as what CM Punk did to John Cena, of course, on that episode of Monday Night Raw from 2011. He said, quote, I said a few weeks ago that I was going to embarrass you and I did not mean at Double or Nothing. I meant right now. I've been waiting for this moment for months. I imagined myself sitting cross-legged at the top of the ramp and I would pull out a lighter and light a pipe bomb and roll it right down to your feet and watch it blow up all over your face. How good that, that would have felt. How full circle for you right here in Vegas. Page then went on to explain why he felt pity for CM Punk, which is why he refrained from verbally assaulting Punk in Las Vegas. Page also took a shot at Punk's pro workers tweet, which was seemingly a plea to the WWE locker room to reunite in the face of adversity. I thought the segment was fine. And to be honest, I would have preferred, actually, if Hangman Page had done that. Um, I like the concept of that. I know there would have been the critics saying, why are you trying to copy a WWE moment, make your own moments, all that kind of stuff. I just whatever. People are going to complain regardless. But I, I would have preferred that. Um, I get it. It's a strange one, this one, because look, Hangman Page's AEW World Championship range, again, I do think is coming to an end this Sunday. I, I truly, I do. It's an odd one, because if you look at it in terms of the matches, the matches he's had are, are very good. But... I don't think he's felt like the main event on several occasions, even though he's been appearing in the main event. In comparison to the other title reigns, Jericho, Moxley, Kenny Omega, I just don't think he's close. I don't think the title reign has been close in terms of importance. It doesn't feel like the key thing on the show. Maybe that's the problem. Even whilst working with someone like CM Punk, it does at times feel like another segment on the show. It doesn't feel like the key thing, the takeaway thing that you're talking about coming out of that show isn't the AEW World Championship. And it's not necessarily to mean that it always has to be, but there have been several occasions where you just, you're thinking about something else. And um, maybe Tony Khan's aware of that, maybe he isn't. But I think that maybe will change with CM Punk holding the championship. I think, as I mentioned, we're probably going to see Punk versus Okada at Forbidden Door. And look, Punk could have a really short title reign. Imagine he drops it all out in Chicago. Who, who knows who his opponent will be? That itself is fascinating. I've seen people saying MJF, and for MJF to beat Punk in Chicago once again for the championship would be great. Not that their feud needs revisiting, but that would be certainly a great way to do it. But at the same time, MGF and Tony Khan have got some issues right now, especially when it comes to contracts. Would you put the championship on a guy that potentially could be leaving? Granted, it's in a couple of years, and maybe if you put the, put the belt on MGF, maybe he'll be more likely to stay. I'm not sure, but that's certainly interesting as well. Speaking of MGF, he is going to be facing Shock Wardlow this coming Sunday at Double or Nothing. Of course, last night Dynamite kicked off with that steel cage match between Wardlow and Sean Spears. MGF served as the special guest referee, doing his best Shawn Michaels referee impression with his short shorts. Of course, Wardlow had to win the match in order to advance to Double or Nothing to face MGF, which of course he did. MGF tried to find ways to sabotage Wardlow's effort in the match, but it all uh, came to uh, proved in, va in, in vain, rather, and uh, Wardlow will be facing MGF. Again, I thought it was fun. I thought it was fine. Um, you know, Wardlow does feel like a big deal. I will certainly give credit to AEW for their presentation of Wardlow. It does feel like they've got a star in their hands. I'm interested to see what the finish will be this coming Sunday because logic would suggest that Wardlow has to win. That's the natural, that's the outcome that has to happen, especially considering the, the stipulations. That's why one criticism is, I'm not a fan of those matches where going into it, they paint themselves so much into a corner with, it's like anything when they say, if this guy loses, he will, he will retire. Or in this case, if Wardlow loses, he's not allowed to sign a contract with AEW and all this kind of stuff. He has to win. And even if he doesn't, you go, what's pro wrestling? They can find a way around it. It kind of makes things feel cheap in the future. So Wardlow has to win. Uh, but if, if MJF is going to be a champion in the near future, then surely he has to have momentum. But uh, is he bulletproof as well when it comes to doing a job? Certainly interesting, that one. Uh, Rampage on Friday. As I mentioned, there's uh, the start time for the show has been a bit up in the air recently. But we have some things announced for the show uh, because, of course, it's going to be the final stop before Sunday's Double or Nothing pay-per-view. It's going to be held, of course, on Friday with a special uh, special start time, rather. Um, top stars like Brian Danielson and the Young Bucks will be in action. Of course, we're going to have the final semi-final of the Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. Israel Ruby Soho is going to be facing Chris Statlander. 
Brian Danielson is going to be facing Matt Seidel uh, after they cross paths in tag team action last week. And the Young Bucks will also have a match their opponents have yet to be announced. But maybe one of the biggest things coming into the show is that Scorpio Sky is going to receive a custom title from Dan Lambert. Of course, Sammy Guevara destroyed the TNT Championship with a sledgehammer along with Frankie Kazarian and Tay Conti last week. So we are going to get this Scorpio Sky custom championship. I would assume it's probably going to be in the color of the LA Lakers. He's used a lot of gear in the past that's similar to the Lakers color. So whether it's going to be yellow and purple or something of that nature, we'll have to wait and see. But um, as I mentioned before, it's quite disappointing, frankly, for me, because the TNT championship feels really meaningless at the moment. And that's because of the back and forth of how many switches they've done. That's because this feud is messy and I don't think the crowd knows at this point who to boo or cheer for. They want to boo Sammy Guevara. They were allowed to boo Sammy Guevara, but then they tried to switch it back and that hasn't worked. So now they're just like, we just kind of want to pay everyone. <laughs> so it's just very, very muddied and I don't think it's working very well at all. And hopefully that will be the end of it this coming Sunday, but we'll have to wait and see. Nevertheless, guys, be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon.